welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So today we've got a bit of a treat because this is a pretty rare old 1980s auto reverse cassette player from Sanyo. And as you can see here, it's the MG80D. As I say, there's not many of these about really. And um, this one's in pretty good condition overall. Hasn't been cleaned or anything yet, to be honest. So uh, I thought it might be worth giving it a bit of a once over. Just checking it over, give it a bit of a service and see if we can get it back to tip top condition. So I don't know if it works yet or not, but I'm guessing we'll give it a head clean and capstan and pinch roller and all that sort of stuff. And we'll check out the condition of the belt as well. Now it's an auto reverse unit, as you can see there. So it's probably got quite a convoluted belt system on this with a twin capstan and twin pinch roller setup, of course. So um, that'll be quite interesting to have a look at. I've not had one of these apart before, so uh, you can come along for the ride with me and see what's inside one of these little beasties. In terms of size, it's pretty small actually for the 1980s. There you go, look. So it's not much bigger than a, than a cassette tape. It's quite deep though, quite chunky. There we go. So we can see it's, uh, it's more sort of cuboid than anything else, but yeah, quite a nice little unit. And it's got obviously auto reverse, so different directions of play. You auto stop mode at the end of the tape, or you can switch it to just continuously loop. And there's a little LED indicator showing you which the direction of travel is. Also then you've got your fast forward and rewind just on a slider switch like so. So the first thing we'll do, I think, is just see whether or not it even works. So I'll try, and try out the, uh, the battery compartment. Now, I've got to say, that looks as clean as anything in there. So we'll give that one a little shot and see what happens. You never quite know with these old things, but let's have a look. Okay, so. All right, well, straight away, we can see a play light is on and you can hear the motor. So there's no point trying the DC input at this point in time. We'll just go with the uh, the batteries because we know the battery contacts are clean. So everything else now is just going to be down to the condition of the mechanicals, really. So what do we know? We heard the motor go in. So press play again. Oh, I can just see. There's the stop button. So, oh, by the way, I love that. I love the whole kind of play, stop, play, stop. It's cool. Rather than just being next there, it's kind of on the other, other side. But if you just watch the gears inside, just start to take up and then stop. So I imagine the belt's just trying to bite and then it's slipping, I think. Um, if we go fast forward, look, it looks like, and I'm just going to, yeah, there's some resistance, but not a lot. And then it's kind of thinking about it the other way as well. So it looks like the fast forward rewind is sort of working, but the play just hasn't got the torque to uh, to turn the wheel. So, oh no, it has now. That's interesting. Okay, so we might have just freed it up actually inadvertently while we were doing the uh, fast forward and rewind. Just have a little feel. Yeah, it's going now. So, okay, let's just stop it again. Let's put a tape in and see if we can get this thing working then. So, uh, we'll put them in this way because it's getting towards the end of the tape, this one. So we'll just play it there. Yeah, I don't know if you can see in there, but nothing, nothing's happening. So will it fast forward? Yep. And rewind. Yes, it does. But still. Oh, no, no, it's playing. Right, just while it is playing, I'm going to hook up my JSX37 Sanyo speakers a minute. Turn the volume down. Uh, let's have a look. Minimum. So we don't get any uh, nasty bursts of volume. Okay. There we go. And if we then... Yeah, it doesn't want to go that way because it's got a... It's got to pull more tape that way, so it's obviously dragging a bit more. You can see it's got Dolby on here as well, which is pretty cool. And you've also got left and right independent volume or splittable volume controls, but they are they are kind of linked, so you can move them both the same. You can hear that tape dragging, can't you? But if I move it the other way, 
there we go so i think what it probably is is the belt's almost there it's just hanging on i think by winging a prayer so it's pulling it one way where it hasn't got much work to do but then the other way it's not it's really not impressed so it's not doing anything so i think the next stage then is to uh get this on the towel of destiny and see if we can crack it open and have a look at the belts okay well it's definitely time for a new towel i think this one's getting a bit grimy but anyways, notwithstanding that, let's get these batteries out and see if we can't open this thing. So, the belt clip on these, it's um, quite easy to remove as you can see, but often they are, they are so often lost actually. They get misplaced, they come loose I guess, or people take them off, maybe if they've got them you know, on the desk or something like that. So yeah, they often get lost, but anyway, that, that one is intact, which is great. So for this one, we've got four screws. I don't know if they're the same length. What have we got? There, the no, that's a machine screw. Okay. So. Come on. Okay, two machine screws. So the one in this corner is slightly longer. And then there's one in the battery compartment just here. And that one is smaller again. Okay, so three sizes of screws for four holes. The tiny one in the battery compartment the longer one next to it by the battery logo, and then the other two are the same as each other. Right, there's no radio on this, so there shouldn't be anything, too much shielding wires or anything. There we go. So it literally is just that back, back case there. So that can go to one side as well. Let's see if we can actually get to anything underneath without having to desolder anything. I suspect we've probably got to take a couple of wires off the board first, but we'll have a look. So the first thing will be to get this tiniest little screw out of the board. Probably got a little washer on it as well. It does have a washer. There, again, almost microscopic. These things always look a lot bigger, don't they, on video? Well, that's what she said. But uh, they really are tiny. Okay, so did feel a bit of playing that straight away then. The bad news is not nearly enough to do anything with. So let's see what's caught. I think let's try and get something out of that notch. Just gonna try and See if we can get these cables out from the board. Incidentally, right. Okay, so incidentally, there's your little adjuster there. If you can see that for your tape speed, little variable resistor. Let's see what's behind this. Sure, over after all these years. Look, the tape sticks much stronger than actually the uh, the solder so you have to be super careful when you do this what you don't want to do is damage anything underneath see how sticky this still is come on in fact i'm going to remove that entirely for a moment there it is that's better it was hooked under that variable resistor so right let's see what we've got now Okay, now I'm going to pull these up and out. They are glued in place. But if I can gently get them out, we might just be able to peel the board away enough. Otherwise, we've got to desolder everything. Okay, like it's looking like a no-win battle at the moment, I think, on this. So 
I think the easiest thing to do, rather than struggling and trying to detach and risk breaking connections, it's going to be easier just to uh, desolder them, I think. So, looks like there's four cables to do. And I am going to kind of get in your way a little bit, I'm afraid, just for a second. But basically, you know, let's do this for some tweezers so you might see. Got probably an earth just there. Then got the positive. In fact, let me get these other ones off first. There's a blue and a white, which could well be the motor wires. I'm going to try and get these away. Like so. And then the positive just here. Like so. Now, with a bit of luck, that should be all we need to do. There we go. Okay. There she is. So we've still got, still got a couple of cables kind of hanging it on. But actually, all in all, ah, there we go. Not too bad. There she goes. Rightio. Okay, so, yeah, I can see straight away. Straight away that belt, you can see it's intact, it's not gooey, it's not horrible, but it's kind of that weird combination of, of a little bit hard, but yet weirdly loose. So, um, they're quite nice, look, you've got the actual belt path on there as well. So, um, you just kind of have to, have to follow that and it tells you where it needs to be, which is kind of cool. I like these little LEDs that are like little spider eyes. Anyways. So there is the belt, and uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, you can see it's not it's not in the best condition. It's a little bit deformed, and quite honestly, it's a little bit uh, yeah, a little bit uh, worn and a bit deformed. So let's go and find a replacement, and we'll uh, basically do the reverse. Okay, I've got a couple of belts. There's the original one, and uh, it's about fifty-five mil, something like that. And I found one that's the same, the same size basically, but um, without the deformation in it. And let's just try this. I've got a feeling that the whole thing has stretched a bit, anyways. So this one might actually be too big, even though it's the right. Technically, it's the size that came off. So if I just turn that now, it's working. You can see it turning the other, the other pulleys. I'm just not convinced there's quite enough pull. It's hard to tell. So I've got one that's slightly smaller. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky because the original size might actually be too big because it's probably stretched a little bit. But you don't want to put too much tension on the motor either. So I'm just going to try a slightly smaller. This is a 50 mil. And yeah, that doesn't feel, doesn't feel too bad. It doesn't feel too bad. We might go with that one, I think. We might try that one first and see what happens. We can always just tweak that uh, that little variable resistor on there for the speed if we need to, just to pick it up a tiny bit. Incidentally, of course, this is where you'd normally get in and clean your headphone jack. Or if you um got any issues with your headphone jack, you can just resold or reflow, reflow the mounting pins there in case they've come loose or cracked over the years. So, um, also, there's a couple of really cool tantalum transistors just in there. Can you see them? They're like little Pac-Man ghosts. There we go. Anyways, that's that. So, I think what we'll do now is um, get it back together and give it a trial run. Right, I've got the board lined back up in the right place. Gonna make sure it's seated properly because of course otherwise the leaf switch on the board won't operate properly when you press play. So I'm just gonna screw that down, just to hold it back in position. And then I think we'll get these uh get these cables soldered back on. And we should be in business.
being well, that should now work. So I think what I might do is try and get this powered up as it is before we tuck all the wires back away. There's a tiny bit of corrosion on the battery spring just there, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We know that it did work before. So if we're just super careful with these other cables, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that we can just press play here. Okay, well something's working. So let us just plug the speakers back in into the headphone jack just there and then we'll put our tape in as well and see what happens oh that love decision good okay so that's working all right then fabulous news so we'll just uh we'll just tuck all these back again tuck the cables back in Get the case back on and give it a clean. And don't forget, of course, to clean the head and the pinch rollers and the capstans while we're here. Make it sound as good as we possibly can. Been a while since this has been treated to a decent clean. Actually doesn't look too bad anyway. I don't think it's going to need that much uh, cleaning up, but you never know. I might have spoken too soon actually you can see the stuff starting to come off now but this is why it's always nice to to do this when you get the chance probably doesn't get done very often at all it might be the first time this has ever actually had a decent clean to be fair it's in such good condition i don't think it's been used a great deal so uh, yeah just by giving this a, a nice clean it's probably the first time it's ever actually been done so there we go. Well, I'll just get on and do that, finish polishing it up, and then we'll come back and have a final reveal. Here it is then, the Sanyo MG80D, all the way from the 1980s, made in Japan. Lovely feature-packed unit, not too much bigger than the cassette itself, really, to be honest. Quite compact for its time. It's got Dolby on board. It's auto-reverse. It also plays normal and metal tapes. So, yeah, pretty cool bit of kit, and it's got the split uh, volume as well for left and right channels. Rather nice, really, and this one's in beautiful condition. It just needed a bit of a clean and a polish, really. So when we've done that, clean the uh, head and the pinch rollers and capstans as well. And the main thing, really, was to change the belt. Now, it wasn't too bad in the end. I think we had to, what, desolder four little wires off the back of the board or something like that. There we go, then. I'll give you a little play, though. It's got the JSX37 speakers there. I'll just press a little bit of play just to try it out. But we'll just re uh, reverse it now. A nice little bit of a acoustic song. And the rock and roll. And then fast forward. And rewind. So as I say, it's all working nicely now. Yeah, it's working nicely and it's brilliant. So everything's uh, tickety-boo on it. There's no crackle from the volume pot or anything like that. And it's a lovely bit of kit, as I say. So there we go. If you've got one of these MG80s and you're looking to change the belt, now you know how to do it. And as I say, not too onerous a task. It's been quite good fun just figuring out how this one works. And I um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell for updates. I've got boom boxes. I've got cassette decks and all sorts of stuff eight tracks video games all kinds of stuff so uh, do check out the channel and i'll be back soon but in the meantime stay safe and take care bye bye for now